There is Chris McDaniel after edging past long-term GOP incumbent Thad Cochran in Mississippi Senate primary this week, forcing a runoff. It is a boost for the Tea Party after some setbacks this season that have establishment Republicans feeling good about taking back the Senate. The roundtable weighs in after this from our political director, Rick Klein. The Tea Party announced that it's back with a bang. Joni Ernst, a Harley driving mother of three and a lieutenant colonel in the Iowa National Guard, blew past her rivals to capture a Republican Senate nomination. She's vowing to make Washington squeal. I grew up castrating hogs on an Iowa farm. So when I get to Washington, I'll know how to cut pork. The same night Ernst won in Iowa, a stunner in Mississippi. I'll just tell you, we're going to get a victory tonight. Newcomer Chris McDaniel forced a primary runoff with Thad Cochran, a senator since 1978. National Tea Party groups are backing McDaniel, a former radio talk show host. Now comes a three-week sprint of a runoff in what's already been the nastiest fight of 2014. McDaniel supporters were accused of secretly taping Cochran's bedridden wife. And McDaniel's career on the radio airwaves included this attempt to define a Spanish slang term. We'll put up mamacita. I've said it a few times. And I think it basically means, hey, hot mama. Uh, you know, you're a fine-looking young thing. McDaniel's comments have some Republicans worried about a rerun of recent Tea Party tumbles. But could this be a repeat of 2010 or 2012? You have a candidate who ends up doing things that are disqualifying. I think the Todd Aiken times were unique and... I don't think anyone with some minimal level of political sophistication actually believes that Mississippi is going to be somehow coming into play uh, in November. For Republicans, though, it guarantees at least a few more weeks of not-so-friendly fire. For this week, Rick Klein, ABC News, Washington. And we are now back with the roundtable. Let me bring this to Congressman Cole. You've spearheaded Republican campaigns uh, in the past, Republican congressional campaign effort. McDaniel, the only real Tea Party star who's looking to have a chance to win one of these primaries, which has made a lot of your colleagues excited about the prospect of taking back the Senate. Well, I think we will take back the Senate. I don't think the race in Mississippi uh, is going to be changed regardless of who the candidate is. It's going to be a Republican victory. Uh, you look at seven deep red states, uh, we're probably going to win six, maybe all seven of those. Iowa, I think, will win. I think there's three or four others, Colorado, long shots in Virginia, maybe not quite so long in uh, Michigan and uh, New Hampshire. So, you know, the, the board looks pretty good. The kind of fights we've had, they've been spirited, but they're not the kind that split us the way that uh, we did in 2000. Yeah, Dad, it sounds like he's predicting the kind of wave that is all about the incumbent party in the White House. Well, you look at the past history of this, every wave becomes about what the current administration is, is doing and what president's job approval. The president's job approval is in the low 40s, which means the Republicans will pick up House seats and the Republicans will pick up Senate seats in the course of this. I think what's interesting about this race in Mississippi, and it's a much broader thing, is the Tea Party candidates that have won and beaten incumbent Republicans, it wasn't so much about quote unquote the Tea Party, it was an incumbent who was disconnected from his constituents, who the constituents didn't feel was back there enough, and who became immersed in the status quo. And those are the ones who have lost in the course of these races. So I think McDaniel wins this race and he wins in November. Mississippi is red. All of the top lines here were definitely about Republicans and they got the candidates they want. They go into the general in a much stronger position. But I also think that there's an interesting conversation happening on the Democratic side where you saw progressive candidates winning in Iowa and California and New Jersey, potentially changing the composition of their caucus. I believe we'll narrowly retain the Senate, narrowly. But if we lose the Senate, uh, I think the president needs to concentrate on global climate change, on executive orders. I think it would be, unfortunately, the death knell of immigration reform. Uh, I, what I would do if I were the president in that case is put a moratorium on deportations. But I still think we will keep the Senate very narrowly, perhaps by one. Let me bring that to Congressman Cole. The president does seem to be gearing up to doing something like that, and it comes when there's a humanitarian crisis that is going to affect your state uh, of Oklahoma, this group of migrant children, up to a 1,000 now, being brought from the border to detention centers in Arizona and Oklahoma. Well, it's not a humanitarian crisis alone. Frankly, it's a policy failure, I think, much more broadly. Uh, I don't think conditions in Central America are broadly different than they were two or three years ago. I think what's moving this up, frankly, is we've made a decision that uh, if you're an unaccompanied minor, 
minor, juvenile, 13 to 17. You show up in the United States. We're not only going to take you in, but we're probably going to keep you here. We're going to try and place you in the United States. I think that's encouraging this. And I don't think there's been a lot of policy thought. Look, people want to help people in crisis. It's an appropriate thing to do. On the other hand, you can't have an open invitation for everybody that wants to come to the border to be welcomed in. There's Lisa, not been a lot left. of policy thought. I mean, I think that there's legislation that can easily go before Congress. We know what comprehensive immigration reform looks like. We have the same conversation every two years. It's time for Congress to just act on this. Um, it is no longer a partisan issue. It is a humanitarian crisis. And on top of that, it's an economic crisis. And we need to be honest about who is the engine of America. I know you want to get in, but we're out of time. I apologize, <laughs> <That's David. okay. laughs> for next week. And we'll be back after this from our ABC stations. And now we honor our fellow Americans who serve and sacrifice. This week, the Pentagon released the names of two soldiers killed in Afghanistan. And that is all for us today. Thanks for sharing part of your Sunday with us. Check out World News with David Muir tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow on GMA.